So precipitation reactions, one where you take two aqueous solutions and combine them, and then predict whether there's a solid that comes out based upon solubility rules, is one type of aqueous solution reaction. Another common solution reaction is acid-base reactions. In these, we have an acid reacting with a base. Surprise, hence the name. So before we really go too deep into these, well, we really kind of have to understand what acids are. For us, there are actually a number of different types of acid. There are actually many different definitions of an acid. Our more traditional zarinius acids are those materials that we typically think of as acids, usually something like HCl, that when you d dissolve them in water, that releases H plus Cl minus. So an Arrhenius acid we can define as anything that releases in solution. And these are aqueous solutions. The trouble is there really is no such thing as H plus. H plus doesn't exist in in solution. In fact, it turns out that the H plus is actually bound up by water molecules. But we can use it as a gauge. So we actually started talking about things like H2SO4 and the way we generated sulfuric acid was to take the sulfate ion and neutralize it and balance the charge with H pluses to give us our balance formula. And so what we're doing now is reversing the process. So these are Arrhenius acids, things that release H plus in solution. And typically, typically stable, the more stable the anion, the more common, usually leads to things that are acidic. So we've already seen things like HCl and HI. These are pretty good acids, but also HNO3 and H2SO4. These would also be considered acids. Now, if there's an Arrhenius acid, there are Arrhenius bases. And again, Arrhenius acids and bases are the most simplistic of these. And the Arrhenius base is usually anything that contains the hydroxide ion, that releases hydroxide ions. So something like NaOH, when you place NaOH into solution, it will form Na plus and release OH minus. So these are Arrhenius bases. So that hydroxide is what we call the base. <clears throat> these are very broad definitions and these are old definitions. Um, for instance, it doesn't explain the basic properties of something like NH3. If you take NH3 and you drop it into water, it'll actually form hydroxide ion and the NH4 plus. So this one does not have an OH minus. Oh, hydroxide, where are you? Where are you? But yet it still is able to release hydroxide. And so how does it do this? Well, it turns out we can use a different definition of acids and bases, one based on the Bronsted de definition. The Bronsted definition is different. The Bronsted acids and bases, Bronsted Lowry, rather than being something that has an H plus that it donates, Bronsted acids are materials that transfer H plus. So the Bronsted-Lowry definition is much more active. It's much more of a procedural. It's much more of a situational definition. So we have to look at, at how it behaves, that transfer H+. Plus. Whereas a Bronsted base is something that accepts H+. Plus. 
So if we take a look at our NH3, what happens is in water, in water, we then we have to look at both sides of the equation. We see that the H2O donates a proton to the ammonia. This one acts as the acid. This material acts as the base because it has accepted the proton. Now, most bronsted acids will also form H plus in water. So HCl reacting with NH3 still transfers its proton to the NH3 because NH4 plus plus Cl minus. And so it can act as an acid. Most acids will have acid-like behaviors and most bases will still accept protons. And so the base, the two definitions aren't necessarily mutually exclusive. And it helps to describe things that are able to act as bases is in the absence of OH minus. Where this comes into play are neutralization reactions. Now you can take an acid and a base and the two will react and undergo a proton transfer. And if you stick with strictly Arrhenius acids in the base, Arrhenius acids, you will make a water molecule and usually some sort of salt. So these are Arrhenius acid base neutralizations. And so if you take something like H2SO4 and you react it with sodium hydroxide, neutralize the hydro, create water, and generate Na and SO4. And if you go back and balance this out, you find that you consume two sodium hydroxides, generate two water, and create an Na2SO4. So this would be the molecular equation, and we can show the ionic equation, 2Hs plus SO4 minus 2 plus two sodiums plus two hydroxides going to two H2Os plus two sodiums plus two sulfates. Sorry, just one sulfate plus a sulfate. The water comes out as a liquid, everything else is aqueous. So this would be the ionic equation. Now, for any acid-base neutralization, at least an Arrhenius one, the net ionic is always the same. 2H plus is it going to be, it's always going to be the same. H plus plus OH minus to create our water molecule. Again, this is liquid water, these are both aqueous. So that's a stereotypical acid-base neutralization. They always create this water molecule when you are dealing with Arrhenius acids and Arrhenius bases. Now the counter ions may also be formed, may also be involved, and they may produce precipitates or they may produce gases, particularly when CO2 is involved. Carbonates. Carbonates particularly when they're treated with acid, are unstable and split into water molecules and CO2 gas when the gas is released as bubbles. Um, and these are just one of many types of neutralization. And so it'll, these are stoichiometry problems where we care about how much acid and how much base is being utilized in a system. And so we can start to count amounts of material.